Hello, everyone. Let's try in this video to describe the zero input response of a system. We do have a system here, it's a black box, where we have an input xt and an output yt. The response of the system, which we call the total response, is the sum of the zero input response plus the zero state response. The zero input is when the input x equal to zero and the zero state is when the, we have a non-arbitrary input with internal conditions equal to zero. The second one is of course looking at how the system responds when we have a impasse function at the input and then when we have any arbitrary input. Here we focus on the zero input response. Before that, let's try to derive an input output equation of a system. Let's assume we have a electric circuit XT which has a circuit with an inductor and a an impedance and we also have a capacitor and the capacitor is given at over 2 F we have 3 ohm and then 1H for the inductor. The point is to define the output, which is the loop current versus the input, which is the voltage X. If we use Kirchhoff law of voltage, we know that the voltage over each component can sum up should be equal to xt. And the voltage over the inductor is the derivative of the current times the um, level of um, the inductor, which is the derivative of y of the t plus this is the impedance times the current itself and the capacitor is defined as the capacitance with the integral over t y over 2 d2 everything should be equal to uh, x t which is the voltage at input So if we derive on both sides, uh, we take the first derivative over here and the first derivative over the latter second side. The other side we will have y square, dt square plus 3, which will be the first derivative of y. And then plus if we integrate and then we Take the derivative, we have 2, the function y equal to the derivative of x dt. So this is a second order differential equation, which gives us the input output of our system. This is not a electric circuit module. That means those equations or so differential equation will be given as the input and output of the model of the system. At the same time, if we have a, a mechanical model or system, we will also provide the input and output relationship. Having this one now, what happens when we have input equal to zero? That means our differential equation can be written in case we say D is equal to the differential over t. We can actually write this one as d square 
place fruit. Dix plus two equal to the differential of the input, which is x. In that case, we can write also dx on this side. But we know that x equal to zero, so the the function is actually d square plus 3d plus 2 equal to 0. The exponential function of the form c times e in the power of lambda t obeys this um, requirement. That means if we do differentiate this function over here, what we get is c lambda square e lambda t plus 3 c lambda e lambda t plus 2 equal to 0. And here we need to replace y, which will be e lambda t equal to 0. We can then factorize c and e lambda t. Here we have lambda square plus 3 lambda plus 2 equal to 0. And then the equation now is to solve the second order polynomial. To do that, we compute delta, which is 9 minus 8 equal to 1. We have then lambda 1 lambda 2, which will be minus 3 plus minus 1 divided by 2. We have minus 1 and minus 2. So when you are given a n order differential equation to find the zero input response, you just need to set the characteristic Equation, setting that to zero, finding lambda, and then you get the output of x equal to zero, which would be C1e replacing by lambda minus t, and then plus C2e minus 2t. This is equivalent to C1e lambda 1t plus C2, lambda 2, T. And we do have a, an inductor in the circuit that may hold current and then a capacitor that may hold voltage. So the initial condition are Y0 is equal to zero, and then the first derivative at zero equal to minus five. Using this one, we then replace the value of zero in each equation. We have C1 plus C2 equal to zero. This is Y0, zero, zero. And then we have Y dot zero, which is minus five equal to C1 cos t equal to zero. If we do differentiate y2 equal to C1 e minus t plus C2 minus t2, if we differentiate it, what we get is minus C1 e minus t plus, sorry, minus 2 c2 e2t that means we can replace it here now so what we get is minus c1 minus 2 c2 by solving those two equations the output will be c1 
equal to minus C2. We replace it here. We get plus C2 minus T C2 equal to minus 5. C2 equal to plus 5. At the same time, we can get the value of C1, which will be minus 5. So the way we now find the equation of x of y, sorry, that means y, which is the response of uh, x equal to zero, will be five minus minus one minus t plus five e minus two t and this is the response of the system when the input is zero. In the next step, we're going to take one more example when we look at the response of the system when the input is a delta function. Thank you very much. <laughs>